So I love the story about how Natalie came to be involved, which sounds, I mean, because obviously, you know, it was quite unexpected. Um, do you think in some ways that her not being an actress really helps her performance? There's something incredibly natural about the way she delivers this character. Yeah, I mean, I love working with first time actors. I did it in my first film. I've done it again here, doing it in the one I'm shooting at the moment. And it, um, yeah, it's, it's special um, because well, with, as a director, with every actor, you find a, a way of working with people individually based on who they are and how they respond. Um, but with Natalie, yeah, there's a real purity there. And also she's acting with her sister. So there was so much for them to draw from, from their own relationship as well. I mean, it's obviously, you know, this, what, one thing I really took from this one is every person has a story and it's something, something so important to, to get across. I feel like, obviously, you know, with the refugees can almost be dehumanised in the press, they just become a statistic. Was that part of the driving force of this movie, was to, to tell this story? And not just those characters, but all of those characters kind of surrounding them have got their own tales to tell. Yeah, that was, was important to me. I really wanted to humanise refugees and um, to show young Arab women in a way that they haven't maybe been seen on cinema before. Um, that was what excited me about, about the project. It was Yusra and Sara themselves and the fact that I saw a younger version of myself in them. And even though I grew up in Cairo in the 90s, um, I related to them. They reminded me of me and my friends. And they are like young women who are in Beirut or any other city and um, that you never see. You always seem to have the victimized woman or uh, that kind of portrayal. And so there was certainly some representation that I was hoping to show, and also a more honest portrayal of the Middle East. You get this grade that is put on the Middle East that, where everything is beige. And I've lived in many cities in the Middle East and they're so colorful and they're so full of life. And I wanted to show that. Yeah, just that scene when they're dancing in a club, it shouldn't feel unique, but we don't see that in film set in the Middle no. East. No, and that's the reality. So um, actually Yusra, when she first saw the film, the finished film, she said, thank you for that scene, because that was my teenage years. You know, one time a mortar landed in the street next to me and everybody was screaming and there was chaos. And then I turned a corner and I went clubbing with my friends. And um, that's what it is to be young and to try to coexist with war. The war didn't hit Damascus the way it did Aleppo or Homs. So people were trying to coexist. People, children were going to school, people were trying to go to work. And Yusra and Sara were being young teenagers. And I mean, I was going to ask too, I mean, just on that sort of subject, that there was that scene with the life jackets, which I thought was incredibly affecting. Was that based on a real image that you'd seen then? Yeah. yeah um, so I unfortunately wasn't allowed to go to Lesbos um, at the time that I came onto the project, but Jack did have the opportunity to go when Sara was doing aid work there. And the life jacket mountain is real. Um, it, life jackets all washed up and ended up being deposited and they don't biodegrade, so it's actually an environmental issue. They can't be disposed of or burnt um, because of the toxic materials they're made from and they can't be put into landfill. So they have this big problem that there's this enormous life jacket mountain um, on Lesbos. Charities are now uh, repurposing the life jackets into bracelets and laptop cases and with the proceeds going to refugees. So there is a recycling situation going on. But yeah, that, that is real. In terms of balancing the themes, I thought it was a remarkable job because this is a, it's a very sad story in many ways. I mean, obviously, you're dealing with characters who are fleeing their homes. I mean, the whole first kind of act of the movie is, is, is really upsetting at times. And yet there's something so uplifting, the whole running the whole way through this film. Is that quite a tricky balance to get right, to show the kind of the more profoundly kind of upsetting aspects of, of, their, of their, their journey, I suppose, and then at the same time celebrate the, the, the great aspects of, their, of what they achieved as well? Yeah, I mean, that was something I felt passionate about because um, there's, there's this fine line between laughter and pain and comedy and tragedy. And Yusra and Sara, it's who they are. They were 17 and 20. It's so young. The way they got through those really tough times was joking around with their sibling. You know, like many of us, sometimes in the hardest times in our lives, you know, what makes us human is our ability to laugh. It's finding that humour and that light in the darkness and the laughter in the pain. And so tonally, that was something I really wanted to capture because it's how you get through hard things and it's how they got through those hard times.
And of course, it must have helped as well. I mean, getting Jack Vaughan involved because he's such a wonderful writer as well. Can you talk about the collaboration process? I'm always interested to know when two writers write together, if they kind of sit in the same room, you know, just kind of doing it. Or is it kind of, do you sort of allocate certain scenes to each other? I just wondered how you and Jack came together to yeah, tell Yeah, well, when tale. I came on board, I was the director and he was the screenwriter. And so he had written um, the screenplay and it, it was different to what it is now. And I had lots of, I had a lot to say and a lot of ideas. And it's, um, he, he did a draft and I had a lot of feedback and it just became apparent that I needed to get in there and put some of my own experiences into it and start writing. And so he was really open and he just said, go ahead, do it. So actually I would rewrite and then I would send what I'd done to Jack and then he would rewrite on top of me and like change or tweak. And then we would get to a place where we were both happy with it and then we'd show it to everyone. So that was how we did it. We kind of wrote individually, but shared it. Mm. He might be a new collaborator, but I was so pleased to see James Krishna Fo Floyd involved because obviously, you know, going back to my brother, the devil. Yeah. Um, can you just talk about sort of casting him in this role? And I know, Gavin, you guys are working together again. Is that right? Yes, yeah. we're co-directing yeah, cool. together. Nice. Yeah, on a screenplay yeah. he wrote. So that's that's exciting. Um, yeah, it, I mean, I love working with James. You know, he's he's the type of actor that I really enjoy working with. And it's... I'm a loyal person. I'll always drag, whether it's crew or cast, you know, the same people back if they're right for the role. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so my final question really, because I mean, obviously it's been, I couldn't quite believe it's been 10 years since My Brother the Devil played at the London Film Festival, so 10 years ago. But I just wanted to ask my, yeah, finally, just, do we, we're not gonna have to wait that long for your next film, are we? Hopefully not. <laughs> I mean, that 10 years, I mean, Swimmers was four of them. And I also um, directed the Danny Boyle, Jesse Armstrong TV series, Babylon, did, um, the finale in three episodes of that, and have been generating my own projects. I think that, in my mind, I always like to work with the compass, not the clock. And it was a bit of a second album syndrome, where you only have one chance to make your first film, and My Brother the Devil took eight years to make, and I wanted to do it correctly, even though it was low budget, and we did it for half a million <laughs> pounds. Um, with the second film, I was shown a lot of scripts, given a lot of material, but I was really choosy because I never want to feel like I've made, I'm making the same film, like making a film that I've seen before. You know, it has to excite me or challenge me because you've got to really live with a film when you make it. I mean, it's years and years of your life and you have to jump out of bed each morning and be super excited to, to fight the battles for it and keep that fire for it. Um, so that's probably why, um, but yeah. Hopefully not have yeah. to wait that long. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. much. Nice to see you again. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks, yeah thank, thank you. Care. Lovely to see you again. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You